Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. We're getting into sea power at the moment and I'm personally not that interested in running pre-made scenarios. Instead, I like to make my own scenarios like I do in DCS. That means using the mission editor. So I've taken a bit of time to learn the mission editor as it is now in the pre-access version and I thought I would show a quick guide. So let's get started. Today, we're going to use the mission editor and create a mission which uh, we're going to run after that probably in a different video so once you go in here here is the basic mission editor the great thing is you get the entire planet to go and play with which is great um, if we use the mouse scroll we can zoom into the area we we'll want to go to and today we're going to go to the Strait of Hormuz to make our scenario today's scenario is going to be one that I've run in DCS and I thought it'd be interesting to run it in this as well and that is we have a US carrier group uh, from the 1980s in this case traversing the Strait of Hormuz here when it gets to the pinch point the most narrow point then Iran is going to launch a surprise attack with lots of fast attack craft or fast attack boat. It works pretty well in DCS. Let's see how well it works in sea power. So the mission editor is extremely simple at the moment. Note this is a pre-access version. It may change a little when the released version comes out. So if we look at these tabs at the top left here, we get scenario where we can set the basic options of the scenario groups. Like DCS, everything is in groups, even single Entities still have to be in a group. Triggers, like in DCS, are logic-based triggers where we can say if a certain thing happens, then force another thing to happen. Note we've been told in this pre-access version not to mess with triggers yet as they're not working well enough. That may change when the release version comes out. We'll just have to see. Background data, if I go there, tab, um, same thing, we've been told not to use it yet in this pre-access version. Mission briefing, we can just set up the mission briefing. So let's start with scenario. First, we need a file name and I'm gonna call this uh, cap123 and I might as well save it. Okay, uh, what do we want the weather? We can have it clear, few clouds, scattered dense, blah, 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 and just scattered will be fine for today. Uh, nice weather. Where do we want the wind to come from? The northeast, south or whatever? I'll just leave it on southeast. And the sea state between 0 and 10. 10 being the harshest sea state and uh, 0 being absolutely no waves at all. Precipitation or rain and whether we want fog on or not. Mission date 26 June 1985. That's fine as this is going to be a 1980s mission. Time um, which is going to be either UTC or Zulu or local time. Um, let's keep it a Zulu and let's keep it 10 in the morning. Central map point in lat long. I haven't actually worked out what this is used for yet so uh, I don't know yet. Also this is a single player game obviously so we can either play as the reds or the blues. Today will be blues and turn background data off. Groups next. In fact before we put groups let's just have a look at some drawing tools. We have some very basic drawing tools so if we click here and then left click let's say here and about there, about 17 miles, left click again, and that creates our ruler here. We can create a marker point as well by going there and just going there. And we can do a circle by going there, click, and we get a radius, obviously. We also have a basic delete tool or erase where we can go like that, like that. It's a little bit awkward because sometimes you have to click several times. Let's see if I can get it working fully here. Yeah, like that. Got it. Um, let's put the ruler back because I want my um, US carrier group to be 17 nautical miles away from Keshem Island here, which is how I run it, which is how I run the scenario in DCS. Next, let's start adding groups. We can add a surface fleet group, an underwater group, an aircraft group, a helicopter group, or a ground group. Or we can load up a group that we've made before and saved. And that's a really good and useful feature. So let's start with our US carrier group. It's going to be a surface fleet, obviously. Uh, where do we want it? Well, let's say let's start there, shall we? OK, first group name. Let's call it US Carrier Strike Group. It's going to be blue. Um, what mission do we want its base mission to be? And we get all these different options. Well, to be honest, I just want it to be attacked. So I'm just going to put it on patrol. 
percentage chance. That is the percentage chance that it will actually take part in the mission. Now that's really useful because like I said it's a kind of a single player game and you might not want to know which of the hostile units are actually going to spawn in and take part. So we can give it a 10% chance and then you've got only 10% chance that that group will spawn in. That's quite useful. Formation, I'm going to put it as battle group but I'm going to override that later on anyway so we'll come back to that. Uh, base rules of engagement, well we know we're going to be attacked pretty much as soon as we enter the sim so I'm going to put weapons free just so I don't have to bother setting them to weapons free manually. Uh, next, uh, what nation do we want this to be? It's going to be the USA um, and unit categories, they're going to be vessels because they're all going to be surface vessels. Next, unit type. We have to make the group unit by unit. So, unit type first. Well, the leader of the group is obviously going to be the uh, carrier, and it's 1985, so it's going to be a Nimitz class carrier. Scroll down and Nimitz class carrier there. Which uh, subunit of that class do you want? Well, let's have uh, CVN 68, so hull 68. If we want to see more information about that unit, at this point, click Unit Reference, and we can see it's CVN-68, and here's its weapons, and here's its planes and defences, and so on. So far, all we've done is selected that vessel. We need to add it to the group now, so Add Unit Pip. That unit has been added to the group. Now we need to finish setting it up. Loadouts never seems to show anything, so it's empty at the moment. Um, unit Nation, you probably don't need to set, but we might as well just set it to USA just in case. It's starting speed or associated speed. Probably ahead two-thirds will be fine. Open flight deck. This allows us to see what's aboard the aircraft carrier. Type, we can see we have 20 Tomcats, um, 11 A6s, 22 A7s. 4 AWACS, 4 Prowler, 10 Viking, and 4 RA5. I don't know what they are. Bean, do you know what they are? That's the fast attack, uh, sorry, the fast reconnaissance vigilante, I think. If I select one of those aircraft types, the squadrons that make up that air wing are, in this case, the Black Aces and the Jolly Rogers, 10 aircraft each. None of this does anything at the moment. Uh, and otherwise, all we're going to want to do is change the loadout. Um, so the F-14s are currently air-to-air -air long range, and you can see really written small there. You've got AIM-9L, AIM-7, AIM-54, and so on, and you can change that if you want, but we'll leave that today. We've used 75 aircraft out of 85 total. Uh, next, uh, do we want this as a high-valued unit? Absolutely. So this is the uh, group leader, and obviously we want it as the high-valued unit. Do we want the radars on to begin with? Uh, yes, uh, in this case, again, I know we're going to be attacked, and I don't want to have to set them on separately in-game. Um, any sonar stuff? No, not interested. There's no submarines at all. Heading? Uh, irrelevant, because I'm going to give the group waypoints. Skill, and let's put them as veterans. Stores? Um, you can have it as few, medium, or full. That's, you know, weapons and fuel and stuff like that. Keep that. And do you want the uh, unit to start damaged or not? Well, no, I don't. Okay, that's our group leader and our CV created. Let's add a new uh, unit. So we're going to go here. Uh, we want to have the front vessel as the Iowa battleship today. So let's go and find that Iowa class battleship. Four were built, obviously. Which of the hulls do we want? BB61 will be fine. Add the unit. And just change anything we need to change. So radars on, check, skill, uh, veteran, uh, and that's all we need to change. Let's add another. So this time we're going to add a uh, modern or relatively modern for the 1980s Ticonderoga missile cruiser there. Um, it's going to be uh, CG-47. Add veteran and radar on. Um, let's add one more thing, a bit of anti-submarine, um, just because we can. So why not a... Uh, OHP FFG, um, which one do we want? Um, let's have uh, FFG 20, add a unit, now set it up. So, veterans, radar on, and it's anti submarine warfare, so why not? Let's put out the tow decoys and the sonars. And that is my group. Next, let's set up the formation. So, formation editor. Well, bearing in mind that that's north here and our guys are transiting through the strait about northeast, then I'm going to say I want Antrim, um, 10 miles, 8, 6, 4, 2. Uh, I'm going to keep them very tight. They're going through a very tight piece of the uh, Persian Gulf, obviously. So I'm going to keep them just two miles, two miles spread. So Iowa there, Tycho there, Antrim there, sort of as a plane guard or about there. 
and then the carrier there. Um, do I want the formation max speed? No, and the formation leader is Nimitz already. Um, I can adjust the size of these numbers here with the bar at the bottom, but I don't want to. I next want to add some waypoints. So if I've got it selected, which I believe I have, if I go right click, pip, uh -huh, right, it's got upset because I clicked on the formation editor. Not a problem. So what we're going to do quickly at this point is save. Yes. Okay, and I'm going to deselect. Uh, uh, here's, I accidentally created a, a new group, and that's a good chance to show how to delete them. So I'm going to left click to select that group, and then left click to select that one I did accidentally, and click remove. Okay, now click on our original one. These are our different members of the group. Now um, it's become unstuck, and I will right click over here for waypoint one, waypoint two. Waypoint three into the Sea of Aden. Uh, next, let's make the surprise attack from Iran. So let's start a new group here. So add new uh, surface group. Let's add it there. And it's going to kind of come across here at maximum speed, as I guess it would do in real life, and try and intercept. So group name is going to be, I'll just call it FAC Attack. It's going to be red. Um, it's going to be, let's have a little look what options we've got here. Anti-surface uh, barrier, anti-surface sweep, anti-surface sweep, I think would be okay. 100% chance of it spawning in. Uh, formation, uh, battle group, and we'll come back to that. Weapons free, absolutely. I want to make it Iranian, find it, Iran. Uh, it wants to be a surface vessel, and the type of vessel I want, uh, I want a fast attack craft. So I've got Boghammer, I've got Kavan, uh, I've got Parvin. Let's go and have a look at them and see what's most useful. So that's the traditional Boghammer as we know it. The dangerous thing about these is their small size and their high speed. They carry a big machine gun and small anti-ship missiles. So that's 46 knots, so that's going to be good at 7 tons. Let's just see what else we've got out of interest. Uh, surface ships, uh, fast attack craft, uh, so a bog hammer, K-Van, that's 21 knots, so that's no use at all. Again, the danger is getting close to the carrier quickly. At 21 knots, it's just going to get smashed by the guns. Parvin, 22 knots, no use. Shershen E class uh, actually looks pretty dangerous. 161 tons, that's a bit big for what I want today. I really want small speedboat esque type thing. So it's going to be the bog hammers, that will work fine. All right, so I'll cross that off. So I'm going to add a unit. I want to add it at a uh, head flank speed to maximum speed. Um, don't need any of this. Radar needs to be on. Uh, heading, trained, for I'll just leave that as simple as I can so I don't have to keep repeating it too much. All right, um, let's create a movement. So uh, with it selected, right-click over here, pip. So if these guys are moving at uh, two-thirds speed, that's 20 knots. This guy's moving at 46 knots. I want to time it roughly so that he gets to them at about the same time or intercepts them about the same time. So if he's moving twice as fast as them, he wants to go half as far, sorry, twice as far, about there, I think, uh, will be about right. Okay, we need to start uh, multiplying it now, so let's start doing that. So bog hammer, add, I'm aware that they say ahead two-thirds, so I suppose, I don't think I need to change that. If it's part of the same group, I'm pretty sure we can just leave them as they are, but I will need to send a radar on, so we'll do that. Uh, add, I'm going to have to keep counting, aren't I? Four, five, nine... 40. All right, formation editor, poop. And if I want to run this type of thing again, it's a good idea to save the group once I've finished it. And I can click save there and save that as a Iranian bog hammer attack. And I won't have to do this every time. Anyway, formation editor. So I want it to spread over. Oh, I don't know. Um, what do I want it to spread it over? Not hugely far. Maybe over about five miles. That's near enough. Right. Um, start doing this basically. Oh, that's cool. I hadn't seen that before, that when you adjust in the formation editor, you can actually see on the map as well. Yes, that is absolutely essential, because otherwise you just put them on in, you know, on the ground by accident. Yeah, that's very handy. No, it can get a bit fiddly. As you see, sometimes it grabs the wrong thing, but you just have to bully your way through it. Come on. Uh, and we have to do it as one group. Well, we don't have to do it as one group. We could do it as all the separate groups, uh, to be honest, viewers. Uh, but I want them to act as sort of one intelligent mass hence why i'm doing them as a single group with a leader and that may turn out to be the wrong thing but we'll we'll see what happens i guess if uh, you uh, forget to do it properly they spawn on top of each other is that the problem 
I have no doubt about it. Yep, they will spoil the top <laughs> of each other. That's right. Double decker bulk hammers. Mm. All right, that's it, viewers. Um, I'm going to go there. I'm not going to bother saving them. Uh, right, we need to save the mission now. Uh, are you sure you want to overwrite it? Yes, and if I want to play it, I'll click play here, uh, which I'll do right now, but I'm going to probably put it in another video. That's what we know about the mission editor so far. I hope that was useful, and bye-bye. Welcome back, viewers. Um, I better just show using the uh, ability to copy groups, because that could be really useful. So if I wanted to double the size of this FAC attack from 40 to 80, I could click on that group there, uh, go to groups here. Um, I could go to save group. I could go here. I could just call it, uh, say, temp save pip and then if i went to here um i would find temp there it is i'll go open pip i would click it where i want it pip and there's another 40 that i can make do whatever i want so you can kind of copy and paste in that kind of way i hope that was useful and bye